spin as a spider swim. Leaves that fall when almost dead. Fabric is dark as blood that's dried. And now our creation shall arise! <laughs> Are you okay? Uh, yeah, 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 I'm fine. Hi there. Welcome to another episode where I get overly ambitious and then complain about being behind schedule the whole time. So what are we doing this week? Since I am a crazy person who also knows how to sew, I've decided I'm going to make my own wedding dress. This means doing a mock-up. Because clearly I have no idea what I'm doing, so I gotta figure that out. And since I'm also a person who likes to conserve my time and materials, I figured if I'm going to go through the effort of basically making an entire wedding dress, I might as well make it wearable. So the plan is to make this wedding dress mock-up and have it also function as my dress I'm wearing in my save the date photos. So that's part one, wedding dress mock-up. Part two, save the date photo dress. Part three is then to dye the dress in some nice rich tones and then take these leaves that I used for like this two second bit in this other video and since I hate the fact that I spent money to buy these things for literally a second I want to attach all these leaves to the dress and turn it all into a elegant autumnal witch costume that I can photograph for this video. So to start killing two birds with one stone I gotta start draping the top of this dress. So let's jump right in. The first inspiration I had for this dress, and honestly just my inspiration for life ever since I saw it, is Rihanna in this golden robe at the Met Gala. I have been absolutely awestruck ever since I saw this elegant, bold train just cascading down these steps. My life has not been career or finance oriented. My only goal is to live at least some small portion of my life with the same energy as these photos. So right away I knew I was doing a dress with a giant train that was open at the front. I looked at vintage dressing gowns as well since they also had that elegant robe feel and decided pretty early on that I wanted to do a wrap dress. The other inspiration was the theme for my wedding. I went simple and classic and decided on Art Nouveau Outer Space. I looked up wedding dresses from the era and I was surprised that a lot of them could be easily interpreted, interpreted, interpreted into a wrap dress. They already had that look of one side being crossed over the other, so I knew I was on the right track. I especially liked the top of this one dress, and I wanted to translate the neckline and the draped pleats into my own design. The autumn leaves of red and gold, leaves drift by the wind. So obviously these are just the very beginning stages, but I'm already really happy with the shape I'm getting. It came together fairly quickly. I was able to get the like wrap dress look while still evoking a lot of the original inspiration dress. I know what you're thinking, Victoria, are you just going to run into the same problem as the last time you draped something on your dress form and it's not going to fit at all? And the answer to that is yes. I have to start somewhere as far as figuring out shapes angles, pleats, I'm absolutely on the right direction, so it's only downhill from here. <laughs> 
I? <laughs> I'm not made for vlogging. I don't think that's my jam. Hey guys. <laughs> hey. So I've had my coffee, even though I haven't gotten out of bed yet, because I'm spoiled and Daniel just brings me coffee every morning without me having to get it up. I shouldn't admit that publicly. So Makara Tours posted a video, maybe I'll like put it over here, where she finished an entire 18th century dress in a day. And I've spent like two weeks on my latest project and all I've done is draft the front of a bodice and then get distracted by literally everything else. Uh, but Facebook reminded me, because I'm terrible at keeping up with dates, that it's the one year anniversary since Daniel and I actually got engaged. So this feels like an appropriate time to get super serious about finishing this wedding dress mock-up slash save the date photo shoot dress slash which costume what do i say now what do i do now <laughs> so i guess i'm gonna do that <laughs> no i'm not this is not making it into the i'm really just doing this to hold myself accountable because if there's video evidence saying that i was gonna work on this today i guess i'm obligated to actually work on this it's Two thirty, and I'm just not getting started. Um, I have less energy than I would ideally like to have. But well, what can you do? The next thing to do was to figure out the skirt, and for that we had one goal: big, long train. I started out by draping directly on the dress form with some large pieces of fabric, but no matter what I did, it's looked so puny. I knew that this was going to require some more serious planning, so a warning, the next section does involve some actual math and exact measurements, so feel free to skip ahead until our natural chaotic energy resumes. Everything I just did for the first trial draping of the skirt was wrong, so we're going to get all this out of the way, go back to the drawing board. Because what I did first for the back was just like a shape like this. But what I actually need to do is do two panels. So I have a seam going down the middle. And do this. So I can get much more volume. So I think what I need basically is a full circle skirt that overlaps in the front. This is my waist. I was going to try to do everything in scale. Let's see if we can do that. Three and a half feet. So what if we do three and a half inches and then it's one twelfth scale? Is that how things work? But I'm thinking I want a three foot train. So in the back here, six and a half. Okay, and so we're going to overlap. I do want it to start like short and then come around because I want the front to open because to me that's going to, what's going to help it read more like robe than wrap dress, which is what I want to go for. It's roughly... Front panels, side panels, back panels. Then it was simply a matter of measuring out the lines and angles I just drew, so that could be translated into feet and I could turn this drawing into a full-sized pattern. Daniel was a lot of help with this. Ignatius was not. As I work on these projects and videos, I ask myself, what is the narrative going to be? What story am I trying to tell through this process? We have the ambitious and talented main character, whose hubris is kept in check by humbling experiences and almost crippling self-awareness. 
which I like to think makes for a relatable journey through whatever obstacles the project presents. However, any good story has an antagonist, and too often that's ourselves. Our own doubt, or lack of self-discipline, or lack of knowledge. That's why with projects like this, as I learn new skills and find the motivation to press on, I do feel like I'm journeying further towards true character growth. We make the art, but making the art makes us who we are. All right, I got the pattern done. Almost all of the cutting out done. So I'm gonna go throw some disc golfs. Disc golfs? Go throw some golf discs? <laughs> and take a little break. We're working on our rollers. I can't wait for this to go terrible. assembling the pieces of the skirt that we cut out of the purple fabric. If I like how that looks once it's assembled and on the dress form, then we're gonna cut the lace overlay layer. We need to disassemble what we draped for the bodice on the dress form so we can trace it out and make a paper pattern and then reassemble all that. I do want to do some test dyes today though on the gradient and see how that goes. I want to dye it a red, fading up to like a lighter red, and then the black around the bottom, fading into the red to get even darker at the base, and then attach all the fall colored leaves to the skirt, going up from the bottom of the dress towards the waist. But time to get things through the sewing machine and onto the dress form so we can see if our skirt pattern is actually turning out like we want. By the window, the autumn leaves of red and gold, falling leaves drift by. So I have the skirt assembled, and it's literally too large for my craft room. It's even too large to get in a single shot. Um. But I think maybe that's good. Maybe that's what we want. I do really like all the draping going on. How it opens up at the front. So I think I am going to move on to cutting out the lace overlay, which is a wider fabric. So I'm hoping to cut it out in just two pieces rather than the six panels I have here. skirt layers finished which is perfect timing because my horsehair braid just came in this as you can see it's just like stiff woven plastic it's to sew into the hemline of the skirt that way it'll hold its shape around the bottom which will help it stay like flared out and add volume to the skirt so I'm gonna sew this in we're gonna pin it back on the dress form see if we're happy Sewing this horsehair around this giant skirt was so much sewing. Because I had to sew it once, and then flip it over, and then sew it again, and I had to do that to both the lining and the overlay. It felt like one of those like fun facts from a textbook, 
Like, did you know if you take the entire hemline from both the lining and skirt of a wedding dress and attach them end to end, it can reach all the way to the moon. So here's the back of the skirt, all laid out with the horsehair braid. Looking good. When we next join our main character, she is getting prepared to do some fabric dyeing. Boiling a giant pot of water takes a while, so be sure to enjoy a hot dog in the meantime. So I decided to do a tablespoon of dish soap. I don't know why. Oh no, it said liquid detergent. It is liquid detergent. Right? Into the boiling water she mixed the dye. And her recently sewn skirt was confidently dunked into the mixture. Little did she know the tragedy that was about to strike. Oh, you're gonna let her go. Like I said, I'm doing a gradient dye, so the first bit is not gonna be in there for very long at all. I want it super pale. Oh, okay. And then I'm gonna leave each section beyond that in for a little bit longer. And also, here to this. Do this number, because then, you know, the bottom stays in, but then the rest. She was about to mess up in the only way she could have messed up. Oh no! <gasps> I dyed the top instead of the bottom. I just messed up in the only way I could have messed up. Third. And I guess grab a tarp. Or lay this out and spray it Where's down. The tarp? Things are happening the way they're meant to be. Is their water still hot enough? It honestly made me sick to my stomach to go back and watch this. I can't believe that I dyed the top of the skirt instead of the bottom. Like, how little was I paying attention? As disappointed as I am in that, I guess I am proud that I just kept pressing on. I added black to the red dye, which was originally the plan, and I continued to dip dye the bottom to at least have it go from dark to bright, even though there really wouldn't be any light on the skirt at this point. It was just all gonna be red instead of fading into the off-white, and I just gotta go with it. There's nothing else you can do. By the window, the autumn leaves of red. Whenever I'm doing a gradient dye, I like to hang up the garment and give it a soak to help pull the dye from the top into the bottom as it hangs and dries. I put the dark red dye into a squirt bottle to try to get a more even and gradual fade. No, it's definitely like contr controlled. You can get very specific with it. Yeah, because I want it to start on the edge. I feel like that I'm getting more of it. Yes, it's definitely... I like... I'm glad that you're doing this. I think that's a good... Because when you first told me the idea, this is that's more like what I envisioned. It is the next day. This is what the color of the skirt looks like after being washed and dried. It's more of like a radial gradient than a top to bottom gradient. I mean, obviously we know the mistakes that I made from the jump, uh, but I'm gonna solve that by dip dyeing the very bottom of the bodice to blend into the skirt. And it'll just be as the gradient starts way further up the dress than I initially planned, but I'm actually okay with that because I feel like having more of it dyed is going to help it look less like a wedding dress. Also, I was going to go ahead and do the whole process over again, do it in the red and then do the bottom in the black just to get more saturated color, but I have these leaves here that I'm going to attach to the dress and it's a pretty good color match. And so I think having these just go in a gradient from the darker red up to the orange is going to blend in into the skirt nicely and also just help with the visual gradient overall. So the things to do today, dye the top so we can get it assembled, 
and get the sleeves done. And at that point, we'll pretty much be done with the dress. We can take the save the date photos, and then once that done, well, once that done, once that gets done, we'll move on to attaching the leaves to the skirt and adding the embellishments to turn this into more of a witch costume. So let's get to dying. Like I'm dying over how beautiful this dress is turning out. Um, I'm gonna get out of the floor now. All right, I'm almost out of battery. Hopefully this doesn't stop recording. So we'll get in a little closer. I think we're pretty good on the color. The gradient's looking really nice. And oh my gosh, you guys, now that I'm seeing it with it going up the bodice, I'm absolutely obsessed. I know a lot of the times in art and creative fields, mistakes can sort of end up being design inspiration, little design miracles, but it's also frustrating because you're like, geez, I wish I didn't mess up all the time. But now that I see this gradient completed, I'm, this is, this is everything. I love, I love, love, love this. I can't wait to get it put together. To finish the bodice, I hand sewed the pleats and darts in place with it on the dress form just to make sure the placement was exactly where I wanted, even though all this would sort of get changed later in the fitting. That part did not make it into this video, and also not featured is the sleeve, but after the fit and sleeve got fixed, we finally got to take the save the date photos. And even though these are only on the green screen and are obviously going to require some photoshop magic, I'm really excited about how they turned out. Okay, last step to getting this skirt done. We took the save the date photos. So now it's just a matter of doing the decorations, which in this case is putting on these five hundred leaves. Right now, I'm just gonna pin them in place and see what sort of design I can get. Um, and I asked a poll on Facebook and Instagram if I should torture myself and hand stitch all the leaves or just hot glue them. And more people wanted me to torture myself than I thought. Though those people are probably right. So I'm just gonna jump right into getting all this laid out. So I was wrong in thinking that I was the main character of this video. It's definitely this skirt. It's like when Andy Dwyer was supposed to be a minor character that's only featured in the very first season of Parks and Rec, but then his character just sort of takes over and the next couple of seasons revolve around him and his entire relationship with April. The bodice, however, is more like Mark Brandanowitz, who first appears to be integral to the story, but then quickly disappears when the general consensus is that he's boring and no longer serves the plot. The sleeves, unfortunately, are a character that gets cut from the show before it's ever picked up by the studio. The hat, however, which I did not get a chance to feature, will be getting its own spin-off show, so check your local listings for that one. From its complicated upbringings, through its tragic accident, and finally, it's glorious redemption. This skirt has certainly been something. The autumn leaves of red and gold Falling leaves drift by the window the I wanted to bring the colors of the leaves up into the rest of the look, so I added some leaves along the neckline, as well as adding orange and peach flowers to the wig. And with all that done, it was time to head out and film the reveal.
As always, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. Let me know down in the comments what you plan on being this Halloween. And there is a link in the description if you would like to support the channel. Can't wait to see you next time.